This is Ian Cameron for Sportsbook Review, and we're going to look at your CFL Week 12 betting preview for the upcoming week of Canadian Football League action. Yes, I know everybody's excited for the start of the NFL season. Yes, I know college football is entering Week 2. Everybody is all gung-ho for NFL and college football, but let's not forget about the CFL. There's still plenty of regular season left. The season runs till November. Plenty of opportunities still out there to make some money. We're going to try to do that here in this video. We're going to break down Week 12 of the CFL. Let's start with Montreal taking on BC. This game on Friday night, September the 9th. And the Montreal Alouettes will be looking to finally get their sputtering offense on track in this game. That's been the biggest issue all season long for the Alouettes. Their offense has been absolutely atrocious. And it really hasn't mattered who the quarterback has been. I mean, Kevin Glenn hasn't gotten the job done. And in fact, Montreal is making a quarterback change going into this game. Kevin Glenn, the veteran, has been benched. Rakeem Cato, former Marshall, thundering herd quarterback, takes over as the starter for Montreal in this game. And it can't hurt. I mean, the way you look at it right now with this team is they can't play any worse offensively than they already have. Uh, They've been held below 20 points in the majority of their games. Kevin Glenn's been a turnover machine lately. Six interceptions in his last two games. That's simply not going to get the job done. Uh, And it's time, I think, for a change. And In fact, Kevin Glenn on the season, 13 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. That's not a number you want to see. We'll see what Rakeem Cato can do. Rakeem Cato made one start earlier this season when Kevin Glenn was injured against Hamilton, and it was an ugly performance. And Rakeem Cato has had some ugly performances, but he's also had some good ones uh, in his brief CFL career. You know, he's got a handful of starts now under his belt, so at least he's got some experience in the starting quarterback role with this team. It can't hurt, okay? It can't hurt, and it can only help because Montreal's offense has just been absolutely awful. We'll see if it this quarterback change creates a spark. Uh, certainly, Deron Carter's return should help this passing attack. Deron Carter served a one-game suspension last week against Ottawa. He'll be back on the field uh, for the Alouettes offense here, so it should help create a big target down the field for Rakeem Cato. On the flip side, like a lot about what I'm seeing from this BC offense, uh, Jonathan Jennings uh, has been great. The dual threat quarterback, 64% completions, 12 touchdowns, uh, 6 interceptions this season. He's led BC to 4 wins uh, in their last 5 games. Uh, BC with a very strong 7-3 and three record straight up, 8-2 and two against the spread. They've been a little bit tricky to trust at home, though. They're actually 2-2 two and two, uh, here at BC Play State on their home field and they haven't exactly been very good from a point spread perspective uh, on their home field either uh, when you look at what they've done uh, just two and two as well against the spread at home so you know BC's been a very good team one of the best teams in the CFL for sure they're still battling with Calgary so it's a big game for them I'm not sure though I'm ready to trust them laying this many points, 9.5-10. I'm not sure I'm ready to trust Montreal either enough to endorse them, but you know, laying this kind of number is a little bit tricky. BC beat Montreal 38-18 last month when these teams met in Montreal. Uh, it's a tough one from a side perspective. I think the number's right on pace. If anything, I'll look over the total in this game, 48.5. This is the lowest line total of the week in the CFL. Understandably, you've got two capable defenses, a Montreal offense that has been awful all season long has not produced, but they can only get better the way I see it uh, going from Kevin Glenn to Rakeem Cato. It can't get any worse for them, so maybe that's a spark for that Alouette's offense that leads them to maybe produce a little bit more in this game than they have most of the season. So maybe a lean to the over. Certainly value in the number at 48.5 there to look over. Uh, Saturday's games, we're going to start with uh, Saskatchewan and Winnipeg. This is now the first of three games in a row where it's a rematch from Labor Day weekend, uh, and this is one of them. Saskatchewan, Winnipeg. What up? terrible loss, brutal loss, painful loss if you're the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. You fell behind against Winnipeg last week by 20 points. You battled back. uh, You tied the game only to have Winnipeg drive down the field, kick the game-winning field goal with no time left on the clock. Uh, and Saskatchewan ends up with another loss, this one in painful fashion. What makes it even worse is that there was a pass interference call made on Saskatchewan on that final Winnipeg game-winning drive. Uh, it didn't look like P.I. to me. I mean, and the Saskatchewan Rough Rider bench certainly didn't believe it was pass interference, but it got called, and it was a big-time swing uh, in Winnipeg's favor on that final drive. The game probably goes to overtime if not for that penalty, uh, not, if not for that pass interference call. 
Instead, Winnipeg gets enough time to move the football, set it up in Justin Medlock, field goal range, and of course, he's one of the best kickers in the league. He's not going to miss many, uh, and he nailed it. Winnipeg wins 28-25, heartbreaking, gut-wrenching loss for Saskatchewan, now 1-9 on the season, 4-6 and six against the spread, but I'm seeing signs of life from Saskatchewan. That's two weeks in a row now where they've been behind by more than two touchdowns, and they've battled back. They didn't throw in the towel. They didn't quit. They didn't lay down. They kept playing. They kept competing, and they kept trying to get back into the football game. That's a positive sign for the Saskatchewan team, and from what I've read, they are you're always concerned when you lose a game that week. You're first of all, you're one and nine, and you lose the way you did last week. Is this the point where Saskatchewan finally taps out, and we see a significant drop in their effort and intensity, knowing that it's almost impossible now uh, to make the playoffs? I'm not so sure. Just because of the painful way they lost that game, the players seem to think that hey, we're we're close. We should have won that game. That call was a bad one. We got to f- fight back and get ready to beat beat these. Try to beat these guys. Uh, beat Winnipeg here uh, this week upcoming. So I don't know, based on those quotes, that Saskatchewan's going to be flat here. I think they're going to be a motivated, inspired team one more time. I think the concern will be as if they lose this game. Then they're 1-10. and Then they're, you know, a uh, at the point where they're way behind Winnipeg in the West Division and at the point where they're not going to be able to catch them. So this is an absolute must here for Saskatchewan uh, to win this game. They're probably already out of it as it is right now, but uh, don't tell them that. Uh, so I think they're going to give a good effort. And the one concern I have with Winnipeg, they're playing great. They're fi- they've won five in a row. Let's give them credit. Uh, they've won five straight games, four and one against the spread. But as we mentioned last week, we had Saskatchewan plus uh, five as our CFL play of the week last week on the video. It cashed with Saskatchewan only losing by three. Winnipeg's overvalued now. Okay, plain and simple. I mean, they've had a great run, but you know they were an underdog in every game they won in the first four games of this winning streak. Last week they were favored by four and a half, five points, and of course they only win by three in life or death to win the game. And it is worth noting they've still been outgained in each of their last four games, so it's not like they're dominating the other team. And it's worth noting Saskatchewan was minus two in turnovers last week as well, which played a big factor in Winnipeg pulling away, winning that game at all uh, last week in Saskatchewan. So they're playing good, but they're an extremely overvalued point spread commodity right now. One that I think is maybe worth betting against here once again. Of course, I'm not the first one to realize this. I mean, this game opened Winnipeg 10.5 point home favorite. It's down all the way to 7 across the board. I'd still lean Saskatchewan, but so much of the value is gone. I mean, it's just the number's just been pummeled down, hammered down, hammered into shape uh, on the Saskatchewan side. Uh, So, you know, unfortunately, we're a little late to the party, but still lean a little bit to Saskatchewan in that game. Uh, We got Calgary Edmonton Saturday. on uh, Saturday, September 10th, the second game of the doubleheader, a rematch from last week. Calgary, I think, playing like the best team in the CFL right now. They've been phenomenal. Uh, just dismantled Edmonton 45-24 uh, to 24 last week. And really, that game may not have even been that close, if not for a Bo Levi Mitchell late first half uh pick six that he threw as he was falling to the ground. Uh, But other than that, it was another dominant effort by Calgary. Calgary's on fire right now. They are playing fantastic football. They're 7-0, 6-1, 7-0 straight up, 6-1 against the spread their last seven games. And yeah, usually, you know, general thought process in football is, especially in this league, when you have home-and-home rematches like this, you want to bet on the losing team of the of the previous game the next week. I'm not sure I want to do that here. Okay, Calgary's hands down right now the best team in this league. They're playing like it. And I know people that are going to make the case for Edmonton here. They're going to say, oh, Edmonton is still a quality team back home. Uh, they're going to want a revenge for beating Calgary or for losing to Calgary on Labor Day Monday uh, and saying Calgary might be flat, a little fat and happy after that win. But hold on now. You know, there's been about three or four games in a row now prior to last week where Calgary could have been fat and happy, a little bit flat, you know, a little bit of a letdown, and all they did was get 
take care of business and get the job done every single time with a straight up win and an against the spread point spread cover. I mean, this team is just a well-oiled machine. Bo Levi Mitchell doesn't seem to be any letdown in him. He's intense. He wants to win every single game, every single week. The leader of this team on offense, the receiving core, doesn't matter that Joe West's are injured. They found guys to step up. Tavares Daniels, you know, a bunch of guys that have been able to step up in the receiving core for Calgary. Mike Riley and the Edmonton offense can score points. They're always a concern offensively with the two big receivers, Darius Bowman, Darrell Walker, but they showed last week they lack big time on the defensive side of the football compared to Calgary. That's where really the main difference is between these two teams. Calgary's the far superior team on the defensive side of the football. They've shown it, and I think that's probably uh, what pushes them over the edge here. I mean, if you're betting on Edmonton, you're kind of hoping for a Calgary flat spot or a Calgary letdown. I haven't seen one. I haven't seen one in weeks from this team, so why should I believe it's going to happen here? We're going to get back to this game for play of the week for week 12 at the end of this video. Uh, we're going to talk now about the Hamilton-Toronto game, Sunday, September 11th, the final game uh, of the uh, week 12 slate. Hamilton with a stunning epic comeback uh, against Toronto. Uh, uh, just an, an inexplicable loss by the Toronto Argonauts. They were in control. They were up by as many as 20 points in this game. And then a second half furious comeback by Hamilton. They got their offense going. Zach Kalaros had a tremendous second half. Uh, Hamilton's defense got some key turnovers, some pressure finally on Ricky Ray, something they weren't able to get in the first half. Forced a couple of Ricky Ray interceptions, which really, really swung the game in Hamilton's favor. They end up coming back from a huge deficit. 27-7 they were down at one time. They win 49-36. Uh, just an impressive comeback. In fact, Hamilton scored the last 25 points uh, in that football game. They were down 36-24. They got 25 unanswered to win 49-36. Steal a point spread cover as 10-point home favorites uh, in a game that they didn't look like they were going to win uh, at all at one point, let alone win by double digits. Uh, I don't like this Toronto team at all, and I like them even uh even less at home. I mean, their BMO field home record, we've talked about it. They've got no home field edge, none zero. I mean, it's a Halloween cost it's a Halloween costume party every single Argonaut home game in Toronto. Everybody comes dressed as empty seats. I mean, it's just absolutely pathetic that this team still does not get attendance figures and interest uh, that is good enough for CFL, uh, for, for, for an acceptable level uh, in the CFL. You've got a, just an, a half-empty stadium almost every game. That may not be the case here because you're going to get a lot of Ticat fans making the short trip to Toronto. There'll be a lot of Ticat fans in attendance, I'm sure. I, I, Toronto's been awful at home. All right, and their defense is still banged up, still struggling. They got shredded in the second half by Zach Kalaros and the Hamilton offense. I don't think it's a bargain to back Hamilton, near four-point road favorite. I don't think I'm going to lay it with Hamilton, but I have a hard time endorsing the Argos, even in revenge mode for what happened uh, on Monday. The one concern is now Hamilton has won the season series. They've already beaten Toronto twice. This is the third and final game of the season series. Even if Toronto wins it, Hamilton still has the season series tiebreaker uh, if they end up tied with the same record at the end of the season. But uh, I still can't trust Toronto. They're not playing good enough defensively. You know, that uh, pressure that Hamilton got on Ricky Ray really concerns me uh, going into this game. Uh, I'm not Again, I'm not going to lay it with Hamilton. You just worry that maybe they're not quite as focused this time around. Toronto desperate to finally beat this team, but I just can't trust it. And Toronto's been awful at home, 1-5 and five straight up. Uh, you know, one four and uh, one four and one against the spread for the Argos at home this season. Uh, they've been just burning money left and right, playing on this home field. That could continue here. So tough game to call, but a hard, hard time trusting Toronto. May see another shootout, maybe a lean over the total there once again between the Tie Cats and Argos. All right, let's wrap this Week 12 CFL preview video up with my play of the week. Play of the week is on a roll in the CFL. We've cashed three straight play of the week winners, seven and four, 64% now with the play of the week for the CFL season heading into Week 12. We're going to go back to the Edmonton-Calgary game. Revenge be damned. Okay, I don't care about revenge. Calgary's the flat-out better of these two teams. They proved it last week. I think they prove it again here. Laying less than a field goal with the CFL's best team. A cheap number, in my opinion. Let's take the Calgary Stampeders. Minus two and a half. That's rotation number 487 to beat the Edmonton Eskimos, their provincial rivals, one more time. Calgary, minus two and a half against Edmonton. Edmonton struggled straight up. Edmonton struggled against the spread at Commonwealth Stadium this season. 
and I think it's a cheap price to back the better team. Let's go with Calgary, minus 2.5 over Edmonton, your Week 12 Play of the Week in the CFL. Go to SBRodds.com. Browse, compare, and shop live odds available at top online sportsbooks. 